Hey there, Jess. Hello. Hi, Hi Jess. Um, Deidre, just so you know, for the notes, uh, Mr. Coleman will be with us tonight. I already have that noted. Thank you so much. Thank you. Is, uh, let me see, Andy, Peggy, are you here? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Okay. Andy, I can hear you, Peggy. Thank you. Andy, are you with us? Hey, Sean, I had a little trouble logging in from the um, school website. I had to go into Zoom and put in the numbers. So I'm not sure maybe some had a problem with the link. Were you just clicking on the link, Scotty, or were you dialing in with your phone? No, I was, um, I clicked on the link. Actually, it wouldn't load. And then I just went to Zoom, the Zoom app and put in the numbers. I couldn't get the page to load. Okay, let me look But at it, it looks like other people got in. Yeah, other people got in, so maybe it was just me. Okay, I will still Andy, take a look at Deidre is your host tonight. She's going to be sharing the protocols okay. for you. So I'll look into it. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I'm in, Scotty. I can find Andy. Awesome. All right, we'll go ahead and uh, call the meeting to order. I need a motion to approve the agenda, please. Move to approve the agenda as presented. I'll second. So moved. Motion by Andy and second by Peggy to approve the agenda. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, we'll move on. Thank you. We'll move on next to the Zoom uh, protocols for our meeting. If you could put those up, Deidre. And I'll just read them as you guys can look at them there. Uh, thank you for joining us tonight for a proper school board meeting. Well, we appreciate all who are in attendance, unless you're called upon by the board to comment we ask that our guests throughout the meeting, please keep your microphones on mute. Additionally, it's important to note that we will not be um, addressing questions or replying to comments through the Zoom feature that um, the text feature that's on Zoom and we won't be taking comments um, in the spoken format. Uh, as noted in the agenda for the announcement for this meeting, if you have a public comment that you'd like shared with the board, you're requested to submit your comments in writing in advance to Deidre Holmberg um, at Deidre Holmberg uh, at prosperschools.org. We appreciate your assistance and allowing the board to conduct an efficient and effective meeting about the business of the Prosser School District. Thank you. All right, we'll move on to reports. We'll start with assistant superintendent reports and then just continue on down and move into director reports. So we'll start with uh, Deanna, assistant superintendent for curriculum and instruction. Hi, Deanna. Hello, good evening. Um, I have three things tonight. The first one is uh, school improvement plans will be coming to the board in December. Um, Scotty and I have talked about the 16th. Um, because they're common plans, elementary's plan is together. Middle school and high school is too. There's just some differences for high school. We'll be doing that all on the 16th. So Scotty, I just had a question. Are we gonna do a study session at six for that? Or are we gonna do that at seven? Um, board members, what would you like? It, it might be easier to keep it um, all at one time and it may just extend our meeting a little bit, but um, trying to start early, we may lose some folks that um, that, And that's fine. So. Okay. What do the um, other board members think? Just a second, Deanna, let me check with sure. Jess and I'm, Peggy and Andy. I'm fine I with agree. either way. I, I prefer to have it start before the meeting so we have time to really go through it. You'll okay. actually receive yeah. the plans. Um, we're going to send those out to you the first week of December, so you'll have them well ahead of time. Great. Thank you. I prefer the 7 o'clock start, and if we have to go later, then we go later. 
Okay. So we'll go with um, seven o'clock, Dana. And okay. Um, we had already talked about getting those out to the board. Yeah, we're just Thank you. putting some final touches on them. So you should, like I said, you should have those that first week of December. Um, we'll mail you the full plans. Um, uh, we are working on a new uh, professional development series uh, to help teachers increase student engagement in their schoolwork and increase their engagement during their synchronous or live video time. Um, those will, we're going to start that in uh, December. The wonderful thing about everything we're doing um, is that we have quite a few teacher leaders that um, have developed some expertise and we are helping to plan and deliver those trainings. Um, we'll be doing those after school and teachers will earn, can earn free clock hours for those. Um, my last thing is I just wanted to recognize um, some staff members. Um, we had a, a, I'm a homeless liaison and I've been working with a family for um, the school year, uh, before the school year even, who were really in a very desperate situation. And um, we had some staff members, I can't really go into details, but we had some staff members that really stepped up and went above and beyond to help this family and these kids. Um, so I just wanted to recognize at the high school, uh, Athena Glubrek sarton Angela Skeen, Annika Schroeder, David Funk and Brian Bailey and Letitia Campos. At the middle school, um, Jamie Smasny, Don Fitzgerald and Connie Hatchstall. And then from my office, Marcy Mercer and, and Tammy Feekin. Tammy Feekin has a, did a, a way above and beyond job. All of these teachers, all of these staff members did, but she really did. So um, like I said, I can't show the details, but it was, a, um, it was a situation where help was really needed. And these folks really um, stepped up to make sure that, that these kids were taken care of. And that's all I have for tonight. Any questions for Deanna from the board? All right, thank you, Deanna. Uh, next, we'll move on to Craig, uh, Assistant Superintendent for Business and Operations. Good evening. Uh, just a couple of quick things for me. Number one, uh, you have the enrollment for the month of November. And uh, so that's good news. We're you know, within one from September, October, and November. So we're still 31 uh, full-time equivalent students above what we budgeted. Uh, the breakdown is 36 uh, short in, at the elementary levels, 13 short of the budget at the middle school, but the high school is 80 over. Um, so that's, so the high school is saving our bacon uh, as far as the enrollment is concerned. So that's, uh, that's a good news through, uh, through the month of November. And just a reminder to the board, the apportionment dollars from the state uh, is based upon the budget for September through December. And then starting in January, the apportionment reflects the actual year to date. So uh, if that maintains, uh, we'll get a pretty healthy increase in the month of January. The other thing I'm working on is the lease of the OIE property. And um, maybe just a question. I know we talked about at the last board meeting, having like a 90 day or a three month out that the district can just give the tenant three months notice. Um, we had a five year lease currently that expires in December. I'm just wondering, uh, Again, if we could get out, if the board wants maybe a three-year lease, that's what we used to have before this five-year lease. Again, not knowing what we're going to do with the property, we could certainly uh, open it up in another three years if, if we didn't sell it. Uh, I'm not sure if the, if the board has a preference on that or if we could just, just go with the five-year. Anybody have any thoughts on that? Peggy or Andy, Jess? I'm okay with five years as long as the price is right. I know if, if we're if we're just scrimping by, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. We could put some kind of out or buy them out or something. Yeah, yeah, we're we're saying if uh, you know if we give three months notice to the tenant, then we can we can cancel the lease. If we get any to the lease, but if we get Go any ahead. serious farmer in there that wants to put in hops or 
or do anything really interesting, they're going to want more like a 10 year lease anyway. And, and the, but there again, they'll pay, you know, good money for it. It's, it's not like it's just going to be a cow pasture anymore. Yeah. So, so if you're okay, may I'll just go ahead with five years and see what happens, obviously. I would say so. I think if, I think if the lease lets us have an out, the length of time is kind of irrelevant. Yeah. So yeah. five years is fine with me. Yeah. Jess okay. and Peggy, is that okay with you? Yes, I agree. I agree also. Okay. Those are the two things I had. And as I talked about at the last board meeting, I'll have um, the year end financials ready for you for that meeting in the first meeting in December. But I'll send you, I'll, we'll email, we'll mail you a hard copy because uh, it's, a, it's a pretty good sized packet. So you'll have some time to look at it. Okay. Um, Craig, on the consent agenda tonight, you have the blue sheets, the payroll cert on there. Do you need yeah. us to come in and sign that? How do you need to get that? Well, you know, I, I have eight months worth of, <laughs> of uh, vouchers. I'm going to maybe ask the auditors if, if you formally have to sign that. Like I say, all the vouchers, all the blue sheets, you know, haven't been signed. They've been approved. You know, by motions with the board, but haven't formally been signed. So with COVID, I don't know if, um, you know, probably take you, you know, 15, 20 minutes to sign every one of those if we wanted to, but maybe I'll get a ruling from the auditor well, unless the board wants to come in. Yeah, why don't you do that? Let us know what we need to do. If we need to come in and sign them, we'll take care of that. I don't want to go into the new year with a whole bunch of leftover stuff we haven't signed, but yeah. if it's okay that we not sign them and we can do it off of the approval of the uh, minutes and the motions in the meetings, then right. we'll just go with that. Okay. But could you well, let us know okay. by the next meeting what and we just, need to do? Just speaking of minute of, of meetings, uh, Scotty, I know that um, we've had some conversation about the earliness of the second December meeting. And it's, yeah, we're going to move it to the 16th. Be, yeah, the 16th. It's going to be pretty impossible for us to have all the vouchers and payroll done by that date. So we might need to schedule just a quick, you know, supplemental meeting just to approve the vouchers and payroll. Okay. Why don't you give us a date? We received the time. Um, that's like kind of what I was looking for. December, so yeah. Yes. You know, maybe just a quick. We'll meet on the 16th. So you need it sometime after the 16th, but before yes, the end of the month? Before the, before the uh, 31st. Okay. Well, you just need three of us. So if we get three of us on a Zoom call and we can yep. get those approved for you. Okay. Let us know when yeah, you need so to do we that can, and we'll we get can it. We talk about, you know, a potential date if, if you know, a little later, if you want to. Okay. Thank okay. you. That's it. Thank you. Any questions for Craig from the board? All right. We'll move on. Uh, Mr. Lusk, athletics and activities report. Hey there, trying to get the, get my camera on there for you. There we go. Good to see everybody. I uh, wanted to catch everybody up on uh, student activities slash um, ASB. We have uh, everybody rocking and rolling at the high school. Um, Alex just finished at the middle school. So they have their ASB council ready to go. Thanks to uh, Connie Hatchdell for the work that she did there. Uh, we have a number of different clubs that are meeting. I know the board likes to, to hear about the different ways students are connecting and staff are connecting with them. There's multiple different um, clubs that are meeting virtually. We have um, different uh, celebration weeks, et cetera, that are going on. So the kids are really pushing hard to continue that work, um, even in a virtual setting. Um, the We worked with uh, office staff and the ASB officers, we tried to add to our um, services that we provide on the website relative to who's who's who in our ASB as far as kids, um, you know, picture, a little bio about them, et cetera. Uh, and we parlayed that into the uh, coaches part. If you go to the sports site, you'll see coaches' names, links to their email addresses, et cetera, so that there can be more communication um, identification and communication to coaches um, as students might have questions, et cetera. So I appreciate the staff's work in getting that done. Um, 
we have, uh, uh, I think you had one club request for approval on the board. I, I responded to an email I got earlier this week relative to HOSA, and I hope that all the information is there that you needed. Um, we made sure that you had access to the application, the constitution, um, approval from ASB principal, etc. cetera. Uh, obviously another club, it's in the CTE. So there's a requirement for a student connection and student leadership part there. And HOSA is a part of our health sciences part through CTE. So I think, um, uh, I think you have everything that you need to approve that, but we'd love to get that rocking and rolling um, as well. They're already rolling, they're already doing great work. Um, I included on the report too, uh, just a clarification on House Bill 1660. There was a question last week about, um, is there any connection to CTE there? And uh, no, the, the um, connection for students to qualify there for, for that is through the free and reduced lunch program and a release of that information so that we can waive fees for student, um, student fees and activities. Um, the second way a student can be recognized there is if they're a member of the College Bound Scholarship, which again is based on um, low income status for families. Those are the two that trigger that support for students in our schools and wanted to make sure that you had that. Um, we have not, we've been researching our own uh, policies. We have to either adjust or implement a new policy. Scotty, you and I communicated on that a little bit today. And so Mr. Uh, Reynolds has just been a little bit busy. So he and I have not had a chance to you know, bang through that, but we'll get to that real quick. Um, on the athletic part, there has been, um, boy, a lot of work that's been going on. We opened up the family ID registration, which was just the nuts and bolts that have to be completed for kids to be able to participate. Uh, we opened that up. And as of earlier today, we've got 220 kids that are registered. Uh, would expect another, well, I'd love to see another 100, um, but we're getting close to what we might have um, at a start of a year, although this is not a normal year as we know. Um, we've continued in uh, conversations with our kind of a COVID planning group with nurses, uh, with bus garage, food services, uh, maintenance. I'm not sure who else, I, uh, principals, um, secretaries, just making sure there's uh, information and um, supplies. And Dave's all over that. Um, Matt put in a big order, I think at the end of last week. So I think we're rocking and rolling. Dave's got a lot of stuff up at the, the shop that he's organized to get ready to go. He'll probably mention that later. Uh, we've also been following <laughs> the ever-changing guidelines from the state, uh, whether it be from the governor's office, from uh, the WIA on uh, guidelines for participation. Uh, a little bit of a change that just came out this morning here in a second. Uh, thanks again to Sean at the district office, the health stations for our staff are, are up and running and we can go in and attest every day if we choose to. Um, Skyward also has that option for our um, students. And so as we kind of move forward, wanted to thank Sean and having that ready, because that will be a piece of the requirement, obviously, for if we get back to a return to play. Um, we continue having a weekly meeting with our coaches uh, in preparation. We also did or invited about 25 or so um, athletes that are leaders in our school to just ask what kind of questions they had with regards to um, where we're at and if they ever return, what that was like and if they had any questions. We had about six or eight show up, not a whole lot of questions, but we walked through some of the protocol that we have in place. And I think it was a good start to just have that conversation so that they know uh, they've got some places to go if they have questions and we're here to hear them. Uh, we've uh, in that meeting with the coaches, too, we've talked about what some of the mechanisms are um, at the point we do return as far as developing um, a, uh, their pods, which is the, the term that they use of about six students per pod. Uh, requirements, obviously, of identifying who's going to be in those pods so that we can track all that, but also identifying the space that's necessary for workouts. 
Um, and again, we're really talking about workouts and training as opposed to specific in-sport um, uh, actions and workouts there. Um, we've uh, put together a kind of a tentative plan. If, if we were to come back as far as uh, how many days do we have between the time that we would start and the time that the state has set for um, first season to start, and coaches have agreed on a, a plan of attack where we'd be uh, equitable in providing the, a similar amount of time for the um, spring sports, for the fall sports, and for the winter sports in, a, in that summer 2.0 fashion. Uh, this morning, the uh, Steel Washington WIA pushed back the start of those seasons uh, all the way to fe February 1st. So they've taken the the three sports seasons and the start would be all the way back to February 1st and they'd reduce the seasons to about seven week time frame um, to be able to fit all that in. Did you say seven, Kevin? Um, yeah, seven weeks. Seven, okay. Less than two months. Um, they, uh, as a part of, they all, well, in, in doing that, they've also extended the time for this open period all the way until then, which is great. Um, but as a part of the government, the governor's um, information, we are not inside uh, through December 14th. So we've got some challenges there, but uh, whoever's in charge of the weather out there, start working on it and try to keep it at least dry. Uh, so that was my basic report. I do uh, would like to comment. I've had two really um, good, lengthy conversations with Matt, um, specifically looking at the protocol, the expectations, the information that came out from the Department of Health, uh, recent information from uh, WIAA, which almost all of that stuff is on our, our website, on our Prosser High School Sports website, down at the bottom if people wanna look at that. Um, but, uh, and look for yellow marks because a lot of it they've updated as of this morning too. Just dates and movement that they've, they've done on that. But obviously um, there's, there's restrictions in place. Um, obviously we're, everybody's aware of the current situation relative to numbers uh, in our county. Um, so we have a, a challenge ahead in a return. And I certainly don't have to tell you guys that because you've been working at it for the last four or five months. But um, I think that there's some opportunities here. I guess I'll give you my opinion. Um, the benefit of, of kids being able to have some kind of physical activity, have some kind of um, connection to their classmates, teammates, and their coaches, the people who are mentoring them and advising and helping, I think is very positive. And uh, the, the challenge that we have, and I, and I guess it's, it's certainly a whole lot more than a challenge, um, it's a, boy, a need to be, if we return, the need to be vigilant could not be uh, stated enough. Uh, everything from us being consistent with the expectations with kids, the staff, the protocol, the sanitizing, the masks, all of that. It's pretty laid out, very clear in the guidelines, and we, we would just all have to meet that. That was a part of our reason of trying to bring some kids on board to have the conversation so they know what those expectations are gonna look like. Um, the guidelines do give us a little bit of flexibility that we can you know, be as, as strict as we want. We can't make it any looser than what the guidelines obviously. Um, we did, if you want a, a little bit of a conversation about what that return might look, look like, there's, if we, if we say, there might be about 40 to 50 days maybe available. I'm just throwing out a number that starts, you know, you know, maybe before we get done with the school with this year, but there could be 40 to 50 days of workout times. Um, we could divide those up, uh, divide it in three and, and provide the opportunities for those different seasons to begin doing some workouts and, and get a chance to see each other and, and do some healthy things. Um, again, there's a lot of detail in, in that information. I, I, I'd be happy to speak to any of it, but I, I don't want to bore anybody or take up a bunch of time on that. But um, 
I got to say, I'm, I'm a little excited, even in this crazy time we are at this moment of uh, seeing a chance for kids to return and, and be back at it. Uh, Kevin, could you, um, I, I know we have a lot of parents that are interested in it, our students are interested in it, the board is, could you kind of walk us through um, how you responded to the kind of the prompts that Matt sent you on um, soon as possible play dates, the what practices would be look would look like. Um, I sure. think explaining that would help. And then okay. I had put, I don't know if you can see it. This one you sent. Yep. Um, I don't, can you explain that to me? I don't understand what sure. it means. Yeah. So okay. let's start with that's a good place to start. So I didn't put um, on the left hand side, it just says weeks, like one, two, three. That's really just an order. We would take the number of days that we'd have, we'd divide them in three. And we would start with that top one with like the spring sports would be the priority sports. We've talked to all the coaches, almost every coach is willing to have a workout and wants to do something for the kids. So we've agreed that in this first third of our time, let's say a couple of weeks, the spring sports would be the focus and that's the, that's the group that we'd be working out. Now, if little Scotty uh, doesn't do a spring sport, but he does a fall sport. The fall sport would have uh, an opportunity for practice and Scott could still work out for fall sports. And if Scott was only a basketball player and he didn't do any of those others, uh, if the basketball coach was holding workouts during that time, then he could go to that workout. So it gives as many kids as we could hit an opportunity across the whole time frame. So after the first two, three weeks, whatever that time frame is, we shift. Fall sports would become the priority sports. So we'd be talking, you know, soccer and, and vo volleyball and, and football and those kind of things. That would be the priority sport. But if a student didn't have one of those sports, then they could go to their first alternate, which would be their winter sports if they had one and then so on. So and then we would rotate to the third one and we would put the winter sports would be the um, third one up. Uh, it made sense to our staff since the first sport that would start if we get to go in February would be the winter sports. So those guys would have a chance to kind of work out specific to that sport and then roll into that season. So that's the, that's the season part. The workouts, as far as that would look like, would be obviously outside with all the protocols, masks all the time is the expectation on the guideline. Sanitize in, sanitize out. Uh, we've worked with Dave for stations and stuff. So let's just say we're gonna have one or two spots. It might be um, up at, um, might be at the stadium. It might be on the practice fields up by the new site, um, kind of by the softball fields and the old soccer spots, wherever there's some grass to run around and work out. And um, again, we'd, we'd put those together. We'd have to know who's gonna, who's coming. And there's a, uh, a protocol for kids to um, attest that they're okay to, uh, to attend. They don't have uh, any symptoms, et cetera. That same list comes through our uh, office, which then would be grouped by sports. So if let's say we're doing our spring sports, our track coach is gonna get a list of all his kids who have attested for the day, knows that they can practice, coach takes attendance there at the stadium or field or wherever they're at. And then um, the expectation of six feet um, separation uh, for the, for the whole time. And again, this is, this is, a, this is a challenge, uh, especially when kids haven't had a chance to see each other for a while, but that would be part of that being vigilant. And then we would go through the practice and then head our way out. I don't anticipate super long workouts. I mean, we've been, idle for so long it, it should it's not going to be super long and we can stage them if we have a group if we're talking track and they've got 80 kids that are interested in coming out we're not going to bring 80 kids out at once so we would probably stage them a certain number you know for the first hour and then a second number the second hour to be able to get everybody in there did that help yeah yeah it did um so is this is this somewhere that parents can look at it and see how that's kind of laid out just to give them something to think about how it might work? Yeah, and so all of that stuff then, that, I, that I sent to you guys, yeah. I'm gonna put on our website, Okay. but I wanted you to see it before I made it available that way. 
Sure. And then the, so the you guys had that. And sports and other sporting activities, COVID requirements, and it's kind of, I think you updated it or WIA did with the changes yeah. after the governor spoke this weekend. So that one is a great one. Yeah, so, yeah, and so we'll put that on there too. And that one was a, a response. That was a response to the governor's information. So they, it was nice that they put that out in the fashion that they did. But it speaks really clear about, you know, hey, you got to be outside. You got to be masked all the time. And um, and one of the things I think is important too uh, is it really sets who's going to be at those workouts. It's not an open to anybody and everybody. It really needs to be kids that are a part of our program that have that are cleared to participate, that have uh, followed the attestation, and we're not going to we can't have other people just coming around, hanging around, little brother, little sister. Uh, that's not a that wouldn't be safe and, and part of the protocol. Um. About halfway, I think it's the second, uh, how practices would be constructed. And it talks about the students being in, or the athletes being in their pods. So is it five kids in a pod and a coach? Is that how you get to six? Or is it six kids and a coach? Be six, six kids in a pod. Okay. And a coach. Okay. Now, if the coach and the plan is that the coach remains um, separate from all of those pods so that they can supervise multiple pods. Um, and so as long as they continue uh, keeping their social distance from any of the pods, then they're able to go between and kind of instruct or supervise more than one pod. Um, in talking to the coaches, it's uh, what their picture as far as working out is, okay, we're going to have a certain number of kids in for this first 30 minutes to 60 minutes. In certain number of pods, we'll use our space, we'll be done. Those students leave. If we have more kids that are coming, we'll deal with them and, and then we, we go from there. So that it's, we're not um, you know, overshooting our numbers. Obviously, if we go, if and when we go inside and if the same protocol and there's, a, there's a, another challenge there just because of the space. And so we would have to again, stretch out that time and have fewer kids in the gym at a time. And, and we'd have to have a, you know, the varsity go, the JV go, the freshman go, so that we could have enough space and be safe. Okay. So is there any kind of um, continuity to the pod? Or do those six, six kids stay together? So we're not cross pollinating with our, if we could trace then those six kids stay as a unit as they train? Absolutely. Or, or could they and, be mixed up? No, we're, the expectation is that they stay with their pods. And if 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 uh, little Matt doesn't show up to work out, then your pod is now five. You don't change that. And our coaches, we've worked with our coaches to have the conversation too, because we're providing. Um, we want to have some consistency as as much as we can. So we've asked that the coaches, let's say football and basketball, to have a conversation that if we're going to put these six kids in a pod for um, the whatever the sport is, let's say baseball. We're going to try to keep those same six together if we're moving to a different pod, say a fall sport, football. Um, if it's possible, we can't be 100%, but we can certainly do a little bit of work on the front end and minimize the exposure between pods, if that makes sense. We have, um, there's some time issues. Um, only because of sunlight, obviously, at this point. Uh, we do have some light uh, if we use uh, the stadium that could restrict us a little bit, but we, it also is, could be a, a plus in that the there's enough light that comes outside into that softball, second softball field area, where there's more grass, we can we can use that space. So that gives us you know, more like uh, two, one and a half fields as opposed to just one um, for the workouts. Um, I, I don't know if you know, or maybe Matt, is the new baseball field um, usable yet? I, I don't know if the lighting is, um, if all the- I've seen the lights on, but I don't know about the, the grass. Are usable uh, yet. The new, the new baseball field will be released to us in the <laughs> spring. Yeah. Spring, okay. It's not, so it's not ready. Not yeah, okay. it's not ready. 
All right. Um, this is accounts. Do we have um, enough coaches to do what to do? Do we have coaches that are saying they, they want to do this to, to pull it off? So I, in our meetings, um, I've only had a probably not from maybe two sports and it made sense, golf. And um, I think one of the, I can't remember the boys or girls tennis, they were just a little bit on the fence. So for the most part, we had uh, all coaches that were interested. And again, we can, they can, we'll be layering this in per season and on, obviously we would really want them to participate in the priority sport time when their, their sport was up. If they choose to participate and be a part of it during the alternate, that's great. That just give our kids even more time to, to be a part of something. I don't think I had any other highlights on here. Jess or Andy or Peggy, do you have any questions regarding what Mr. Lusk has shared with us? No, sir. No, I don't have any questions. Okay. Uh, thank you, though, Kevin, for all the work that you've put into getting us to this place. You bet. So if, um, I appreciate you getting that to a place where parents can see it. And then from here, um, the, we've got to figure out what we're going to do. We kind of have to watch the county numbers, the state numbers, OSPI is going to chime in at some point, WIA is what to do. So we, as we move ahead in the next few weeks, as we get to this state, we'll, we'll come back and figure out how we're going to get it done. Thank you. Great. Yeah, you bet. And my only thing that I would add is that uh, between now and the time that we go, at, at some point we get the go, we plan on providing uh, some meeting time for kids and parents so that we can really walk through them what those expectations are gonna look like. You know, so, so we can hold a meeting like this, we can record it, we can have it available. That just shows, okay, this is this is what wearing a mask looks like. This is what six feet's gonna look like just so that we can be out there and make sure all that uh, that happens. And that, that signed is skyward for the um, attendance and family ID, <laughs> attesting that they meet the requirements. Is there some training that goes with that so parents can learn how to do that for their kids or help them? Um, you know, they, they could do that. The high school kids could do it themselves. And, and really, Scott, it, it takes five seconds. It really is quick. Oh, really? It's okay. slick. Yeah, it's just a, a two, answer two questions and you're done. We would probably spend more time telling kids, hey, get on your phone and make yourself an appointment for 730 every morning to wake up and attest get that done do take you know you got it because you have to sign in to, to uh, skyward in order to do that okay perfect well thank you for the information i appreciate it got it if there aren't any other questions we'll move on to the next director report and that is the child nutrition child nutrition program uh darlene good evening I wanted to start off by thanking everybody that came out on Veterans Day to Witch Strand to help us with the second harvest and the mailboxes. We had an awesome turnout. Things went really smooth. For the students coming back to school and for our program, it really depends on what that looks like on how we're going to feed our students. If students are in school all day, say Monday and Tuesday, the students would need to come to our cafeteria or our NPR to pick up breakfast in the morning to take it to their classrooms. At lunchtime, they would come and pick up a pre-plated hot meal from the cafeteria staff and take it back to their classrooms. If they came like say Monday and Tuesday to school, when they left school on Tuesday, they would take home meals for three days. If they came on Thursday and Friday, it would be the same thing. They take home meals for the three days that they would be home. We would use Wednesday for our prep and our cleaning days for our department. If the students were to go for the two days of school 
and take home three meals. I kind of worry about the little ones having to take that amount of food home on the buses. If we went to a four day where the students only went half a day, then the students could eat their breakfast at home, which would be provided by our department. And if they left, say, just before lunch, they would take their lunch home with them and eat it at home. Either way, we go with our hybrid school for the students. Our department is flexible and we always adjust to what needs to be done to get our children fed. I wanted to let you know what we're gonna do over the Thanksgiving holiday. We're gonna do just like we did over Veterans Day and the conference. We will be running the buses on Tuesday on November 24th and handing out meals for those days that we're gonna be home for the holiday. We'll do the same thing with our grab and goes. We will provide meals for the days that we won't be there. Some of the challenges for our department would be us in the NPR room if the teachers need it for PE. Right now we're using the NPR at KRV and the middle school because we need to keep our six feet distance. Also, it takes away the mill accounting staff would all have to go to their own schools to tally the breakfast in the morning and then also pass the breakfast out to the students that takes away from our prep time. We have um, Second Harvest again booked on December 15th at Witch Trend with 300 mailboxes. And today when I was on my OSPI Zoom, I found out they're gonna be doing another PEBT and that's gonna be based on our free and reduced applications. So we need to make sure our parents are turning in their free and reduced applications. And we also need to make sure that their addresses are up to date with our school. How can we help with that, Darlene? I was going to see if I could get something on our web page, our Facebook page, and a robocall on asking parents to be sure that they have their free and reduced applications turned in. If not, to reach out to us in the child nutrition department. Do we have a count of how many um, applications we don't we, or we haven't received back so we could target the, those specific ones to, to make sure we're getting them all? I don't today, but I can sure find that out. I know the mill account ladies are constantly working on contacting parents and sending home letters with the application. We have had quite a few returned, but I'm not sure exactly what the number is right now. I will find that out for the next meeting. And for um, like you did during Veterans Day, um, I think I sent you a note on it. That worked really well. You sent a, a call out or it was an email um, ahead of time letting parents know oh, that they were going to be, um, it was during conferences, I think, um, letting parents know that there were going to be certain days that we wouldn't have delivery, but they would get it in advance. So I appreciate you doing that. If we can do that for Thanksgiving, that would help a lot. Yes, we're going to do that again. Awesome. Any questions from the board for Darlene? Thank you, Darlene. Thank you. All right, we'll move on to career and technical education. Mr. Follett. Good evening, everyone. Um, I just have two things. For, I just have two things to report on tonight. Uh, I'm working on updating our programs of study. This is a requirement by OSPI every every few years to 
update and use the new format. I sent you a copy of the current format I'm, I'm working on. However, I recently uh, had a conversation with Keila Gant from CBC and she has a better, better format than what the state provided and I think will provide even more important and useful information for students and anyone else who's, who's going to, to use this information. Um, it's somewhat similar. It does have some of the, the new pieces that uh, the former, the former uh, programs of studies didn't have. They weren't very specific on what type of careers you could do afterwards in, in any particular area, as well as what the education requirements or certificate requirements would be for those positions, as well as what the job outlook. So, so Keeley has worked with area um, CT directors to kind of morph the old format with what OSPI wants for the new format uh, to make it work. And I think overall, it's going to be a much, much better, much more useful document for the counselors, uh, the office staff, as well as parents and students. And then the, then the next uh, piece I have is, uh, so we, last year we applied for uh, a new course, Computer Science Principles, and I got that submitted to OSPI and just got notification uh, Monday that it was approved. So next year we'll be able to add that into our course offerings and um, start offering, a, uh, have some more STEM offerings at the high school and of course more offerings for students. And then I'm going to start working with Carly Green. Her health occupations course that hasn't been CTE approved because previously she, she didn't have a teacher of record. So it's just received basic ed funding. And so we'll get the frameworks done and get that course approved for next year. And basically with that, that that'll entitle or allow us to have the enhanced uh, CTE funding um, for that course also. Awesome. Any questions from the board for Rick? All right, thanks, sir. Yep, take care. Now let's move on to the maintenance department. Mr. Shell. Uh, good evening. Um, there, Dave. Just a uh, couple of things real quickly, uh, COVID related items, um, some issues that we're just kind of thinking about. We don't really have to make any decisions at this point, but if, if we do back, bring back kids, we're going to have to look at our custodial staffing again, depending on how we lay out the day. If, there, if we have a full day, I think that's probably going to be imperative that we bring back some more people. If we have part-time days, we may be able to make it work. Uh, one, of, one of the questions I have is what, what if, if we we're going to have athletics over Christmas break, which is something we don't really normally do. Uh, we only have about seven working days for us, for the custodians and maintenance. So we'll have to maybe bunch up people at the high school, maybe take one person out of the middle school or one person from Riverview and have, uh, have them help out at the high school. So we're kind of looking at that. Uh, supplies, we, we, we have enough to get a good start. We're really, really well organized. Um, one of the guys at the shop has done a great job. We've got all everything organized out in the storage area. And we're waiting up for the shipment that's coming in uh, that Matt ordered last week, the one that'll really enable us to uh, bring back the kits. So we've kind of made a physical space for that. And well, one of the issues that we're having, probably the big issue is how do we make the pods inside of the classrooms where we have six by six pods? A couple of things to consider is what do, do we remove the extra desks? And if so, where do they go? Elementary schools, we can put them in the NPR. Secondary schools, middle school and high school, that probably isn't gonna work because we're gonna, I'm sure have some type of PE or sports. So we're contemplating leaving them all in the classrooms or in a worst case scenario, maybe put them in the hallway, whatever, if, you know, the extra desks that we're not gonna need. We also have some issues where we, some of the classrooms don't have desks, they have tables. And I'm told by the principals, I've talked, I've talked to every principal this week and uh, tables don't meet the, um, meet the needs, meet the requirements from the state. So they, because you can get too close together, I'm assuming. So uh, we're, we're working that through. Um, 
And then uh, the issues with uh, the maintenance end of it doesn't really change if we bring back the kids. Um, groundskeepers, we may, if we get back, if we can start our sports programs in early spring, then we may have some issues with trying to prepare the fields. So I'm sure we can get it done, but it's gonna be kind of hectic there for a while. So that's about it. Um, stay here real quick, Dave, I got a question. Yeah. Um, Kevin, Kevin or, or Mr. Lusk, are you still here? Yes, I am. Okay, um, one of the things Dave mentioned was uh, maybe needing custodial staff in the schools. In If we go back into uh, start athletics back up in, in this new model, are the locker rooms and showers available or are those closed? Suggested to not be in the locker rooms. Yeah. Okay. Not so be inside. Dave, does that Bathrooms. Change? They would have to come ready to go. Okay. Yeah. So Dave, does that change any needs that you were thinking of what we would need if we bring athletics back for custodial staff? No, I, I had talked to, room. No, I had talked to Linda Kirk. She said the same, exact same thing about a month ago that there are no no plans to bring any kids into the locker rooms in any of the buildings statewide. Okay. So I kind of knew that. I'm just a little bit minorly concerned about because a lot of times during that period, we have a lot of people taking vacations and we have kind of a skeletal crew anyway. We have two, two custodians per building now. So we want to make sure that we have custodians at the high school throughout the day, but we, we can make it work. It's just something that we're thinking, thinking of keeping in the back of our mind here. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin, for your input on that. Appreciate it. Any questions from the board for um, Dave? All right, thanks, sir. You bet. Uh, we'll move on to the migrant, the migrant and bilingual education program, uh, Mr. Lores. Good evening, everyone. Um, just a few things uh, this evening. So I just wanted to kind of provide an update on the re, uh, the tutoring that's been going on. <clears throat> uh, since we have opened it up to the entire school district. Um, last night, we had approximately 108 uh, students and parents show up. Our capacity is 152. Um, tonight, we had 111, um, and we kind of filtered out and found out there was actually 71 students. The majority of the parents that stay are for the elementary students that are third grade and below. So um, we have some supervision there. Uh, one of the biggest concerns we have is as we're getting bigger, um, making sure that we're providing the essential guidelines uh, outlined by the state. So um, we've been, I've, I've been having preliminary conversations already um, with my colleagues about possible usage of buildings um, <clears throat> to help kind of alleviate that and provide the social distancing components. Um, it's right now in its infancy stage. So um, as those talks progress, I will update you accordingly. Uh, we um, <clears throat> have moved forward with a migrant student advocate uh, position this year. This person is somebody who was going to be targeted and focused on migrant students within the Housel Middle School, but really focusing on the transition between fifth and sixth and eighth and ninth in order to reduce those numbers of failing grades or, or dropout rates um, and increase student productivity. For the bilingual program, again, uh, <clears throat> professional development continues. We've moved forward with our contract with Karen Beeman, thanks to the board's approval um, in my previous uh, recommendation. And so now uh, the elementaries will be having some targeted professional development in regards to the work that they're doing in the biliteracy and dual language program. I do want to give a special thanks to uh, HMS and their ELA department. Um, they've kind of been some early adopters and trailblazers taking those strategies that they're learning in the professional development that I've been providing and implementing them directly into their classrooms for students. And they've been received with a positive 
um, feedback from kids. So kudos to them and keep up the great work. Um, I did have some preliminary conversations with our PAC officers, um, which is our uh, parent action committee, just the officer group. And some of the things that they were recommending uh, if, we, if we return to a hybrid model um, are listed below on the document that I provided. Are there any questions that I can answer? Any questions from the board for Eric? Um, one of the things I was thinking as you were talking, Eric, is um, we could probably lean on you a little bit to help. Um, you, you probably have more experience through this tutoring program now than the rest of us have in trying to figure out how kids interact together in this environment with masks on and tables and barriers and hand washing. That's happening at your tutoring site. and uh, we haven't really had to do that in the quantity and the numbers that, that you are. So maybe we could act, tap into that a little bit, Matt, and use Eric to help us um, get some insight how that's working at the tutoring site. Yeah, absolutely. That was kind of a part of part of the initial plan was that we were going to start small and then build it out. Um, so Eric's done a, a great job and his numbers grow. And we're, we're blending that and having more resources available for tutoring for parents. Um, you know, we'll have to find different venues and, um, you know, absolutely transfer all those procedures and protocols that have been developed. Um, but that, that was kind of the plan that um, slow and steady would win the race and that by building it out, we could um, test things and then um, kind of transfer that to other, other uh, professionals. Awesome. Thank you, Eric. I appreciate you doing that. You're welcome. No questions. For, no questions for Eric. We'll move on to special services department. Dr. Dean. Good evening. It's nice to see you. I um, included in the board packet is my attempt to answer the questions that you guys had. Um, and uh, I'm assuming that most of you read it and I can answer questions um, regarding that. I did want to update you on a couple of things before we got to that. Um, our total student count is um, 347. We have 14 um, births, five it's 333 K through 21. We have student, we have 140 students who are tier one students and we have 193 that are tier two. I do wanna share with you that uh, I always wondered what I would do if I won a half a million dollars. Well, I get to tell you because I did. So, but it's for this school actually. Um, I did an inclusionary practices professional project development grant for the um, two buildings in the district that didn't have that, that was KRV and Whitstrand. Along with that, we were given an opportunity to ask for additional funds um, to provide technology to staff, students, and enhance inclusion in the virtual learning environment. I um, asked them for $474,865. They choked when they got that. I've been working with David Green um, weekly to keep answering questions. Today I was told we got every single bit of it. We've been awarded the biggest grant the state has given. Awesome. So um, what we are going to use that for um, when it, we went virtual, a lot of the CARES Act money had to go to supply um, computers and items for this um, special ed kids. What we wrote for was um, enough money to buy Chromebooks for the students, to buy every special ed teacher and pair of laptops, to buy document cameras for the, 
for we enough to get 20 document cameras for our um, teachers and specialists, enough to purchase um, hotspots at $30. Um, and the cost of the hotspots, it um, they need nine months, it's $30 per month. We have um, a subscription up to um, which is $275 per student and staff. And we got um, enough to do 300, every student and every staff to do the, all the hotspots in special ed. So that will allow us to pull back hotspots and to return equipment back into the, um, the tech department and increase our um, accessibility for everybody. Awesome. That's great news, Cindy. Congratulations on that grant. Thank you so much. Um, I, I owe a, a big thank you to David Green, who spent a lot of time helping me work through this. He is the guy that pre-clears the grants and recommends them for, um, for award. We had some really long conversations about the need of our district and why it was so high. So he, um, with that understanding, helped me build the grant to, so we could get it. Excellent work. I have one question on your list under concerns. Uh, you, you wrote, uh, it'll take more staff to manage the students in a safe environment. Are you referring to bringing back the Paris or you mean additional teaching staff? What are you referring to there by staff? Well, so we do, and we already have had to um, increase the time of our preschool teacher because of the size of the room. We can only put three students in there at a time. Um, we would need to bring back um, paras that um, were, aren't currently, well, or increase their time. Um, and depending on how we split things, we have um, teachers who for health concerns cannot be on site. So we have to put someone on site um, and figure out how we do that. Um, but it is mostly the parents and um, one increase in the increase in the preschool teacher. Any questions for Dr. Dean from the board? Not a question, right. but thank you very work on oh. getting that grant, Cindy. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Jocelyn. You guys are welcome. It's my turn to pay it back a little bit for everything that uh, the district does for my department. Thank you, Cindy. Have a good night. Uh, you too. We'll move on to the technology department. Sean. Hi, guys. Um, so okay. I just have uh, very few things uh, to, can you hear me? Am I unmuted? Yes, I am. Yes. I uh, just have a few things. Conferences were last week uh, and I thought they went great. Uh, there was quite a bit of prep work that took place in our department working up to conferences. Like everything this year, there's a whole bunch of firsts. Uh, virtual conferences were a first. So from forms to the meeting links to videos at the various buildings. So it it went successfully as far as I know, as far as I thought it did. So that first is under our belt. Uh, we now have 250 hotspots checked out. Uh, actually, it's about 240 some, give or take. Uh, we have roughly 30 extra hotspots. At this time, every family on our list has been contacted. Uh, if they ask for a hotspot, we have emailed and or called them to tell them to come in for a hotspot. Those 30 will just be extras. Uh, we'll divvy them up to the buildings this coming week so the buildings can check them out as necessary. Uh, new is always fun and uh, new PHS. We have new stuff going on at PHS. The network at the new building will be live January 4th. Uh, with that, our switches which should be the bulk of our switches half to three quarters of them will be installed uh, the week prior to that. So that's super exciting. And um, also the phones, the uh, quotes for the phone systems are in. So we'll be purchasing those too. That'll go hand in hand with that equipment. There were very few things that we took out of our uh, bid with the contractor, things that were going to be owner furnished, owner installed. 
uh, the phones were one of those things. So we're doing our part as well as it's not on my uh, list, but we've also, um, we're also working on getting the projectors purchased, the ones for the gym and the auxiliary gym, because they have to be mounted before the floors are finished. So those are on their way as well. Uh, we've been doing a bit of housekeeping, preparing for when we get to have our students back on campus. Uh, we cleaned out our storage unit. We have been slowly going through every school. We have one more school to go through where we're taking out the uh, surplus technology that we no longer need. Uh, for instance, at the elementary schools, a lot of our classrooms had two computer stations for the students. Our students won't need those anymore since we're going one-to-one, -one, plus they were seriously outdated. So we have been taking those out of the classrooms It'll make it way easier for cleaning, allow us more room in the classroom. So we've been doing that. That's taken up a bit of our time. Our firewall had a major update and that went successfully. That's always, that makes my heart palpitate a little bit when you, um, when you update the, the backbone to your network and that went well. Uh, general tech support has been going well. Uh, we have a system of making appointments that allows us to socially distance. That way nobody's just dropping by our office um, it allows us to have individual tech support with parents or students or staff members that need it uh, without trying to balance other projects at the same time. That's actually, I had my doubts going in, but that's actually been working really well. So uh, I'm happy with that. And um, other than that, that's all I have. Awesome. I have a question. It's great to hear about the new high school. I, I have a question, Scotty. Uh, the computers that we're taking out, the computers that we're taking out of the classrooms because they're no longer needed, are they going to be um, surplus so that families that need a computer can can purchase one as is from the district and uh, um, maybe put some computers in their homes? So the computers that we are surplusing, the answer is no. They're all. Windows 7 or older, um, they, they probably needed surplus. They were computers that were probably bought refurbished and then they were teacher machines and they've been re-imaged several times. Uh, and now they just are kind of existing in classrooms. We are, however, taking out several labs and those lab computers um, are in fairly decent shape and we are not surplusing those. I don't have a plan right now for those other than I'm not ready to part with them just yet. We need a backup too. So those computers, we may look at doing something like that with. Um, the CTE at labs will stay intact as well as some art labs, but each building has a hardwired lab of 30 that we'll be taking out. And those computers, we can definitely look at doing something like that with. Okay, okay that'd be... Um something that I'd like to see is at least consider as we move forward, because it's a good way to get computers in homes of families that don't have a computer, so. Okay, thank you. Okay. Sean, dumb question for you on the question. extra hard. Do you foresee those being used or are they just sort of waiting for people to lose or break down or get handed out or whatever? The extra computers? The extra hotspots. Oh, the extra hotspots. No, I foresee them being needed. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I really, I don't know that I wanted to have a surplus of 30, but I, I see them being needed as families. Um, I imagine at this, at this point, maybe even some families that are on now, or they will talk about it in the community. If they have three or four children on one hotspot, it would benefit them to have a second one in the home. Uh, plus, we have children coming and going, so our new students that might not have connectivity in the homes yet, uh, they will need those hotspots. So I don't anticipate keeping that stock in. Um, it's just a matter of time before they get checked out. Okay, no, not a problem. I was just thinking Dr. Dean had made a comment about her program uh, getting ready to get a bunch, and so it kind of made sense if we had extras in one building to do something else with them. So no, not a problem at all. Thank you. Any other questions from the board for Sean? Thank you, Sean. You're welcome, thank you. All right, next is transportation department, Amy. 
Hi. Okay, so hey based on um, the hybrid schedule, we'll go and run however is needed. But I would like to be a part of that because I found out through OSPI there is some funding stipulations on the scheduling. So if we can work the buses around that to benefit the most from the funding, um, that would be great. With that being said, our routing is up to date with our bus boss program. We have been updating all the address changes and getting files from Sean to keep it up to date. But I'm expecting it to take about two weeks to get the hybrid programs running. I would like to get daily schedules for the drivers so they're only picking up the students that need to be brought into the schools each day. And we also want to notify the parents of the updated times because there may be stops that are eliminated because each day because one family won't go that day. So it'll have adjusting times. Um, so we want to make sure all the parents are notified so that the kids are at their bus waiting. Um, currently, all of our buses are up and running. We have nothing down. Everything's ready to go. We're waiting for our um, surprise winter inspection from WSP. Um, we have been cleaning and sanitizing buses. Before school starts, I want to do one more deep clean on every bus. I've ordered non-flammable Clorox wipes for drivers to carry on the buses to sanitize as needed if something happens on the bus for the students. Um, let's see, drivers, we have 26 drivers. We're currently short one driver. I have one driver who is taking her final test next weekend and hopefully she passes so we can get her behind the wheel. Um, so we will be looking at advertising for a few more sub drivers coming up to get our staffing up to date on that. Um, and then mechanic wise, I did have a question. If we do go back, will we be able to bring back our mechanic that was laid off so that we do have two mechanics in the building for all of the buses out running daily on that schedule? Um, any questions? Any questions from the board for Amy? Thank you, ma'am. Mm -hmm. You changed the format of your report. It threw me off this week. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's move on to the student reps. Uh, Emma, are you with us? Uh, yes, sorry. Um, hey there, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. So this week is the stay homecoming, which is like the virtual homecoming. Um, and we have a couple like activity or not activities like um, competitions going on for each class. We have the um, a canned food drive we have a class mural and um, we have the pride my pet. We have the most spirited Mustang. We also have the, um, I'm missing one more. I believe it's the class TikTok. And then there's one more I'm missing it and I should not be missing it because I made the list for the bulletin, um, but I can't think of it off the, off the top of my head. Um, but so far it's going good. Um, I'm really excited to see how they plan, how they end up. And we're just trying to get it out to all the students. Um, we've been making social media posts for each of the grade, each of the grades for, they, for them to interact and get with them. And then we have had different posts for each competition for the bulletin. So that's really fun for this week. So yeah. Awesome. Any questions for uh, Emma? All right, thank you. Have a good week. You too. Kate. Good evening, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm doing well. Um, 
For my report, I actually, Emma covered well what, what's been going on at the high school. Um, I just wanted to convey, like as a student representative, my job is to represent students. So I, I'd be failing at my role if I didn't um, convey what the students are telling me. Um, right now, the students are, are pretty upset. <laughs> um, kind of, um, I, I've, had, I've had several text me, four texted me today and said that they, they're just upset. They want to be doing something. Um, I know that that's really complicated and I know that you guys are doing everything you can, but from their perspective, all that we can see is that bordering schools are, are doing some kind of athletic participation or some kind of something and, and we're not. And so I think that's really difficult for a lot of kids. Um, anyways, uh, and, and I think that if we, if we can be doing something, we should be doing something. If we're allowed to do it, then we then too. Um, and, and that's just from talking to those students, I'm trying to be an, an ally to them. And so I wanted to convey that. I'm really glad that Mr. Lusk is trying to communicate with student athletes because I know that's a huge part of it. Um, but, but yeah, if it, if it, if it works regulations, I, we need to be doing it because um, I think that connection right now is really important um, between peer, peers and students because we lost most of our like school year and we just lost one of our, our classmates too. And so we need something to connect. So even if that's, even if that's five people wearing a mask and running around spread out on a field, um, I, I just, I, I think I speak for most of the students when I say that we, we want to see something, but um, yeah, on a positive note, we are trying to connect students as much as we can. Online, we've been um, offering a lot of student help. Administration has, especially on mental health issues, um, counseling, and um, yeah, and, and grief, grief counseling especially. So that's what's going on. Kate, how, how are we doing about getting information out to the students about clubs and activities and groups that they can be involved in, um, FBLA or the other, other programs um, that are in the school, other clubs we have? Right. So every morning, usually they include like a kind of a club spotlight or something. And the opportunities are there. I'm a member of like a couple of different clubs and they're there. But the thing is that they're all on a screen. And so it's just another, another hour of staring at a screen. And while that is, it is good to connect on a screen. It's, it's I mean, you know, it's so different when it's in person. And so, um, yeah, we, we have been trying to to encourage people to do that. But um, yeah, I don't, I don't know if that answered your question. We are publicizing that as much as we can. Yeah, but, but the kids are most interested in getting back together. Is that happening outside something. of school? Is that? Oh yeah. Yeah, <laughs> On a, yeah in non-school okay. non sponsored events. Um, it, I mean, I don't, I don't know if your son does, but um, we, we, tr we still, I mean, it's not uncommon for students to meet together outside of school. And we're trying to, but at the same time, we're, we're, we're students. And so, um, yeah, those activities are, are how we we're used to connecting. So. Absolutely. Um, next, in two weeks, we'll have the principals back to report for us. So we'll get an update from Mr. Bailey mm -hmm. then. But Matt, can you kind of help us help our student reps kind of work, work that angle? We've got to find a way that they can connect and feel still involved. I, I hate hearing that they're behind the screen so much of the day for classes and then they have no way of uh, connecting uh, outside of that. We've got to find something that, that works somewhere in between. There's got to be a way to make it work. Yeah, I, I just, uh, I believe we need to be as creative as we can. Um, a, lot of, a lot of the activities um, that Kevin had talked about in pods 
um, that's a great way to connect. However, there, um, yeah, we need to we need to think about um, things we can do virtually as well as things that kids can do safe, safely, socially distanced. Whether that's a fun run, um, whether that's you know I I don't know um, you know constructing a game where kids are distanced and um, they can uh, they can a few of them can show up, but. Yeah, I, I think there does need to be some some type of activity that kids can connect, uh, whether that's a video game club. I know that Jason Crook did a VR thing, and um, that was uh, he has presented that to the board. But yeah, so, something that they can uh, that meets the needs of every single student and uh, connects them to um, the high school. Yeah. We were considering, um, I know there was a lot of talk about doing a drive-in movie night. And so a lot of ASB class officers are working really hard to do that because the further the year progresses, the more it looks like we're not going to get, um, the less and less we're going to get of in-person schooling. And that's not you. I mean, that's just the restrictions, but yeah. we're trying to be creative, but the pods would be good or, or whatever we can do in person. Yeah, th those are exactly the ideas Pete, that I'm um, talking about, whether it's a drive-in movie, um, you know. Uh, so, yeah, so I, I think that um, empowering our kids, um, our students do have money through ASB um, that they can utilize to spend on, um, they call it cars, um, so we, which is athletic, recreational, um, social, um, or... Um, can't remember the C, um, but yeah. So, so there are things that kids can Matt, spend. Cultural. Yeah. cultural, cultural. There you, there you go. go. Thank you. Cultural. Craig. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So um, our kids do have money um, to to be able to spend on activities like drive-in movie theaters and things like that. So um, that creativity will go a long way. I feel. Awesome. Any questions for Kate from the board? Thank you, Kate. Have a good evening. Jennifer, are you with us? Thank you. There you are. Hi. Um, so pretty much everything was covered by Emma and me, um, but ASB is trying to work really hard to have like different activities for the students. And um, yeah, we're just trying to work really hard in that, but um, it is a little bit dif difficult. Um, so yeah. Any questions on the board for Jennifer? All right, thank you, and have a good week. You too. Next is Superintendent Superintendent's report, Mr. Ellis. So I created a list, um, and I'll start at the bottom of the list and work my way up. Since at the top of the list, I had a lot of things about um, kind of the the reopening or the progress we're making on that. Of course, you've heard a lot from different directors. And their conversations have been geared towards that work and the work that they um, individually have been doing. Um, but the first thing is, is that we're continuing to negotiate. Um, we've negotiated or are negotiating with the building secretaries as well as uh, some of the unrepresented staff um, within the district. Um, uh, one of the things that we've done new this year is we're starting to meet as the, at the director level um, and so we used to have ad, um, ad team meetings. We've separated those this year so that um, we have cabinet level, which is the, um, the superintendent and assistant superintendents. We have director level meetings with all of the directors and then we have principal meetings. And so we're continuing to work with the different layers and tiers of our district. Um, professional development, uh, last week Deanna worked with secondary principals on doing uh, professional development around evaluation um, and how to do that, how to do that work, um, and ways to maximize it. And we're continuing to work with Wilma. Uh, conferences. Last week we had conferences on Thursday and Friday, and uh, teachers were able to communicate with parents and talk about student progress. Uh, reopening. Of course, it's been mentioned, um, but Governor Inslee on Sunday rolled back. Um, some of the some of the um, opening opening phases or opening um, plans that he's uh, he's allowed in Washington. 
Um, Kevin talked about WA pushing back their seasons to February. Um, and of course, connected in the board packet was a meeting or a letter that came out late today from Benton Franklin Health District. And their recommendation was to freeze or to pause a lot of opening up at the secondary level. Um, Eric Larez has done great work with the tutoring. Um, we're trying to build that out as we go. Um, but I really, really believe that slow and steady is going to win the race here. And that by being cautious, um, we'll help people from not um, catching COVID. Um, so we're continuing to progress slowly, albeit, but, um, you know, making progress and um, moving things as, as we start to get that attendance from students at tutoring and start to consider things like um, athletics and student activities. I had a meeting with um, some parents last week about their questions and concerns about the progress and barriers um, the district is making around opening up. Um, you know, part of that conversation was how many barriers were in place to reopening. Um, and it, it was actually before a lot of the guidance came out from the governor and from Benton Franklin Health District as we see um, cases rise. And so um, they sent off some questions to the board. Um, if you have any feedback on that, um, please please send me um, the, your perspectives to those questions so we can um, have answers to their, those parents sometime this week. Um, PPE order, uh, as Mr. Lusk had mentioned, um, we worked to submit a PPE order uh, last week um, and it was around uh, $35,000 um, for new PPE. Our original order of um, personal protective equipment, um, some of it got hung up in customs um, and the price points were a little bit more expensive earlier. Um, we didn't get what we, uh, our complete order as we had requested. Uh, so we had to submit another one. Um, so yeah, the price points on, on it were amazing that the ESD was able to get um, like three cents, a three cents a cloth mask um, or 14 cents for a KN95 mask. Um, we have to keep in mind though that a lot of this PPE that we're ordering is disposable and one-time use. And so we'll continue to need to renew that. Um, we're continuing to work with different labor units on uh, memorandums of understanding. And we're continuing to work with our nurses and principals um, around planning um, to, to reopen. Um, I had sent the board a document and uh, I've been unable to post it online, um, but I'm going to, you know, I will be posting it online about kind of a stair-step approach um, to ways we can scale up and scale down um, kind of a transition to hybrid model. So when we think about hybrid hybrid models or blended learning, uh, we're starting with, um, you know, basically virtual learning would be no hybrid learning. It would be completely distant, uh, distance learning. But as we transition to that, um, a blended model would denote that there would be some, some uh, teacher time or some in-person time. Um, so we're working on transitioning from tutoring to, of course, um, the next conversation will be building that out, having that at all buildings. And then at, um, at some point when we feel safe, um, in the, the date that we were seeking was December 7th and 8th. Um, I'm not certain that we'll hit that date now with the new, uh, the new guidance from the Benton Franklin Health District as well as the governor, um, but we'll continue, uh, continue planning. But um, you know, at some point transitioning that, that tutoring model to an in-person um, instructional model. Um, so when we, when we feel that um, things are safe. Uh, until that time, as we work on that, um, like I said, finding creative ways to engage students in activities and providing supports. Um, one, of the, one of the ideas um, that has surfaced within the district is having National Honor Society students tutor, um, tutor their peers. Um, and so that's another tutoring resource that we've been working on. Um, Cindy's been working on providing supports um, through teletherapy and um, starting to do some in-person work. Um, Eric has talked about his work. Uh, Deanna has been doing some hiring on the front of uh, getting more tutors available for students as they need them. 
Um, so we've, we've been working really hard on that and uh, we'll continue to work hard and update the board. Um, so that's kind of it um, in a nutshell. Um, one of the things that um, I had written down on my notes here was to comment about the hot spots. Um, one of the one of the good things, and I know there there's been a lot of uh, perspectives. That this model, you know, this model doesn't work. Um, COVID has forced Prosser School District to be very flexible. Um, so when we think about how rigid a system is, you know, if we have if we have snow or inclement weather, um, how we shut down uh, shut down school school uh, and say, well, no travel and learning won't occur. Um, what we're doing with this will allow us to have learning on those days, as well as the hot spots that we're giving students. If a student uh, needs to be with their family or leave for an extended time, say um, their family goes to Mexico in the winter, they'll be able to have a hot spot in computer, so they'll continue, be able to continue to connect. Um, in the past, we used to unenroll students uh, or give them packets of homework and say, well, you can catch up when you get back. And so this will allow us to continue to provide educational services, regardless of where a student's at or regardless of um, the, the weather we're experiencing. So that's, that's one of the positive things we have going for us uh, with this model. Um, at this time, I'd like to entertain any questions uh, that the board has um, for me around the, this information. Jess, Andy, Peggy. I'm fine. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, we'll move on. Board member reports. Jeslin. Yes. Sorry. It's okay. Um, so I wanted to thank the staff and the students that put together the various Veterans Day assemblies and presentations. Um, those were very well received and uh, yeah, did a good job and appreciate that. And also appreciate the service of those that were in our armed forces or are currently serving. Um, uh, as a parent, I felt that the conferences went really well. It was good to connect with the teachers um, and we didn't have any problems with that. So um, thank you to tech and teachers again for getting all of that ready to go, um, pulling that off. And then an opportunity for exercise, um, socially distance. The Miss Prosser Court is for the first time doing a virtual 5K. They're doing a gingerbread fun run. And um, there's registration currently on their Facebook page um, through Chamber of Commerce. So you can go to the Miss Prosser Court page on Facebook and register for that. Um, and then they have, I think it's a two week period that you can do the 5k within and get your t shirt and certificate of completion. So they're trying to get some other fun things in line with that um, with the businesses in Prosser and um, just trying to do a community event as they haven't been able to do much during this year of their reign. Um, and then along with that, uh, Saturday, the 28th is small business Saturday. So um, shop local shop small try to keep all these businesses afloat so that they stay in our community and are here next year for us to support as well. Thanks, Jess. Andy? I don't have much. Uh, thank you to everybody for putting on the Veterans Day stuff. That was, it was nice. Um, had a quick meeting with Rick, the CT director, went really well, it was, uh, very nice to sit and talk with him, get to know him a little bit. Um, other than that, I don't have much of anything. Uh, thanks, sir. Peggy? I've been kind of a quiet couple of weeks, um, or at least as far as board stuff is concerned. So I really don't have a lot. I did enjoy watching the Veterans Day assemblies and kudos to the the teachers who worked so hard to get that in place for kids. It was, it was really a nice, really nice activity. So thank you. Thank you, Peggy. Um, for me, I just had a couple of things. The uh, Veterans Day, um, I appreciated the, there was a couple of things that happened. 
Um, I got a phone call from one of the leadership students thanking me for uh, being a veteran, and that was awesome. And I, I know they called other veterans around the community uh, that they had contacts for and, and thanked them for their service. And also I got to watch the uh, high school band ensemble do their virtual um, service songs. And that was awesome. So I really appreciated that. And then uh, conferences, Scotty and I did um, his conference uh, online and that it went awesome. Uh, the way that I don't know how the other schools did it. I got to watch the high school one, but there was um, the contact with the Mustang period teacher that you got feedback on how the students doing, but there was also a lot of added content to it that the school had put on their information from the principal, information from the assistant principal, how to connect with the counselors, a lot of extra stuff that they had links to that you could go to um, through the conference site. And that was, that was really cool because uh, in person was a beat up um, online stuff, but this was really cool because you got to on your own go go to those sites and get that information. So I really enjoyed that. So great for the conferences for the high school. I do have one, I had. I have uh, one thing to add, Scott. Yes. Um, and thank you, Linda Barnes, for, for texting the message. But um, we had we recently lost two great um, educators from Prosser, uh, Jim White. Um, he was a wonderful man and my kids loved him and I love him and and uh, he's, he did a lot for the community. And then also Barb Richmond. And my kids went through the system a long time ago, but Barb had them all, taught them all how to read. And uh, she was a great lady too. So two people that we'll really miss. Thank you, Peggy. All right, next on our agenda is the consent agenda. Um, just so everyone knows, item E on that consent agenda is to change our board meeting dates for our December meetings, rather than being the second and fourth Wednesday of the month, we're going to move December's meetings to the first and third Wednesday of the month. So they'll be December 2nd and December 16th here on Zoom at seven o'clock on those Wednesdays. So I uh, need a motion to approve the consent agenda, please. I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. I will second it. Motion by Peggy and second by Andy to approve the consent agenda. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And, and Greg, if you're still with us, please um, get back with us. I, I don't want to set the day right now, but maybe you can work through Matt um, and help us set a date to if we need to come in and sign um, those payroll certs and warrants. Yep, I sure will. Uh, thank, thanks, sir. Um, our last item on the agenda is an action item, and it's um, a motion to approve the final adoption of policy 3211 and procedure 3211 entitled Gender Inclusive Schools. Uh, we've seen this policy, policy several times and reviewed it um, and discussed it, and this is our second and final reading of it. So we need a motion to approve it, please. I'll go ahead and make a motion to approve uh, policy 3211 and 3211 procedures, gender inclusive schools for second and final reading. A second. Motion by Peggy and seconded by Jess to Adopt policy 3211 and procedure 3211, gender inclusive schools. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right, so our future meetings. Um, oh, thanks, Peggy. Our future meetings are set for December 2nd here at 7 o'clock and Wednesday, December 16th at 7 o'clock. The 16th meeting will be um, a little bit longer. We're going to start the meeting off with the school improvement plan. So those will be at the top of the agenda. So we'll knock those out when we start at seven. And then we'll put the rest of the agenda on after that. Um, our meeting on the second will have our principal reports that night. Um, I don't know yet if we're going to also include director reports. Our plan was that uh, we would be starting 
the transition into um, the hybrid phase that following week after the second. So we wanted to get as much information to the board as we could from directors and principals and staff um, as we prepared for that transition into the seventh and eighth for hybrid learning. So um, we'll need to discuss that and kind of see how that timeline's working out, if the governor's gonna let us do it, if the health department's gonna let us do it. Um, so uh, what we'll put on the agenda for the second will be kind of determined by how we move forward for the seventh and eighth. So um, without, without anything else to discuss, if there's nothing else, we can adjourn. Move to adjourn the meeting. And Second. yes, all right. Y'all have a good night. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Good night, guys.